class, my dad is about to teach you how to hand tie your own crappie jig. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Today we're going to be using Protec powder paint. Uh, this is the hard, durable, high gloss. <clears throat> it's one step, start to finish. Uh, got some pretty good results out of this. Main thing is to keep this stuff really loose, shake it up really well to make sure that it's not sticking together. Uh, <clears throat> you can go online and find a, um, a way to hook up a put this into a piece of PVC pipe to make a small uh, little air going through to keep it real light and fluffy to get a better coating. But today I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest step, uh, fastest way of doing this uh, to kind of give you an idea of how it works. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to show you all the way that I have uh, learned how to do these. Now, there is a little trial and error in this when you first start doing it. So if they don't turn out perfect the first couple of times, just keep trying it and you'll, you'll get it right. So the easiest way that I found to do this is shake my paint up, get it ready. Take uh, This is just something that came with one of my jig tying kits, kits, just some kind of little clamp. Just have a candle burning around. I got this from my wife. So anyway, you're going to take this jig head. You don't want to put it in the fire because you'll start getting a lot of black smoke and that's not what you want. Just get it close to the to the flame. And all we're trying to do is to heat this up so that the paint will adhere to it. And as you're heating this up, you don't want to compromise your hook. You don't want to get it too hot, compromise any kind of quality. Just get it really good and hot. And I've got a little bit of that black stuff on this one because I stuck it right in the fire to show you what not to do. But as it gets hot, you'll kind of see that lead begin to shine. That lets you know, hey, this thing is getting right. All right, then you're going to dip it right down here in your paint and pull it out. Now, what you'll notice is that that was hot enough that when I pulled it out of there, um, let me see if I can get this in focus because you can see that when I pulled it out of there, it was very glossy and shiny. And I don't know if you can see that there or not, but that lets you know that you're hot enough. If you pull that out of there and the paint looks uh, real powdery, or has a lot of texture to it then that lets you know that your jig head wasn't hot enough now i've made a little makeshift jig holder here in the background you can see um just a piece of line running across there i'll cross them up from my toolbox as i paint these i just hang them there on the hanger so that they can dry and be ready for the next step all right, guys, let's do one more. And then we'll move on to the next step. And you can see I'm not putting it directly on the fire. I'm just kind of holding it close here. I can see that lead kind of getting shiny. Go into my paint. Pull it up. Nice glossy texture. Maybe you can see that right there. Very glossy when I pulled it out so I know that I had enough heat and if you do this just right, you can see that my jig head, um, the eye on, eyelet on my jig head didn't close up. So we'll have to knock the paint out of that when we get ready to tie it. Anyway, pretty neat. All right, I'm going to hang this one up, let it start drying, and then we will move on to the next step. And another thing, guys, with this paint is um, if you will... Do this step, and then if you want to take it a little bit further, you can actually bake these um, in a toaster oven or in an oven uh, for about 20 minutes. And I believe the recommendation is 300 or 
325 and I'm sorry 350 for 20 minutes and uh, you can bake it on and make it even stronger than what it is now for what we do I found that just doing it the way I do it this actually works really well uh, but if you want to take the extra step you certainly can do that to make your paint stay a little bit better all right guys the next step here and keep in mind I'm not an expert builder but and I'm using a color of thread that goes along with coordinates along with the color jig not that big a deal I've used different colors but anyway we'll just start out with our backing go ahead and just take your thread and pull you enough uh, thread down here let me just tighter and uh, always keep your little extra thread so you ain't got to pull so hard on your jig get your backing going I go down there pretty parallel with the hook put my backing on here I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way all right got that part done the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clip this piece here get that out of our way all right the jig that I am trying to mimic has a chartreuse and I don't know if you can see that chartreuse and orange tail so we are got we're going to start with our orange and get a fair amount of the bucktail hair here hence the name bucktail jig pick out pretty close to however much you think you need and we're doing two colors here so we don't get too much all right guys then you go ahead and trim the the buck hair and remember always make these a little bit long because you can always take off but once you cut that there's no adding to it all right guys just gonna stick it on there we're gonna run down with our backing here get everything secured run down there get it good and tight right there come back to the front all right we got our orange on there and the pattern that I'm looking on this particular jig has got more chartreuse in it than it does orange so I want to give me a little bit more chartreuse this time a little bit heavier and then I'm going to go ahead and trim this buck hair here just trim this off where I want it all right lay that up there where I need it at and you can see it's a good thick tail plenty of buck buck, buck tail there make me a couple of rounds here just to get me get it secured on the front end and then I'll pull back and just run down with my backing here and my, with my thread now I don't know all the technical terms of all this I'm sure that somebody's gonna line me out and tell me everything I did wrong but like I said I haven't been doing this long I just sit down at the kitchen table and learn how to do it one day all right so I've got my good tail there looking good all right now the body is going to be this chartreuse body so I'm going to take off here just kind of unleash what I think is going to be body wise here and then I will lay down the first piece here across the back then I'm going to secure it at the front with a few wraps all right then you're just going to lay that right down the back take your thread run right back down the back of the spine of the hook and back up to the front and get a good wrap on it guys all right now once you do that we can begin to wrap the body up and just I always make sure I get this good uh, tight wrap and uniform make it look as good as you possibly can and the jig that I'm mimicking has a little bit of a build up on the front end so I'm going to try to make it a little bit thicker up on the front end of this jig kind of give it that shape of a small fish you know sometimes crappie fishing color plays a major role other days it seems like you can't go get right with anything or you can't go wrong with anything so once you get your body set the way you want it go ahead take your 
thread and go over it like so like I said I always kind of pull this tight around the front back behind again over the front back behind so how many times you do it I do it four or five times just whatever makes you feel good but main thing is to make sure it's, it is secure because you don't want to give these to a customer or uh, and I just go ahead and put a few more wraps right here on the front end and you don't want to give these to a customer and you get out there and they catch two fish and then yeah jig starts going apart alright guys we ain't got that a little bit tighter but take your tying tool you're going to catch this front you're going to make this triangle on the front end go over top and then you go back around the top and then back around the top one more time. And I will just slide this off of here, which I usually catch on that hook there, on the hook, and then I'll just pull the line up. All right, I'm gonna snug down my knot right up under here. And then what I'm going to do is I'll spin my jig over, and you can see my knot is clenched right under this eye right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip my line off. I put three knots right there on top. And this is something you don't have to do this, but just an extra step. I always put just a little bit of this, this glue here. And this is more like a gel style. This is what they use for tying flies. It is the it's the zap gel. You can use whatever you want. So that's it. Got it done. Got it tied really tight. It's got a really good tail on it. Real nice head. The, the paint turned out really good. And that's it looks like a nice looking jig and you know, I may leave this a little long the, the customer can trim this if they want to make it a little shorter I've got one here actually that I trimmed um, but I, I can I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll just leave this up to the customer you can see I've already trimmed this one a little bit so the tail's already kind of trimmed down but uh, however they prefer it's really up to your customer however they want it but that's it guys and uh, that's pretty simple it's not hard to do it's one of those things that the more you do it the better you get and come up with all kind of great ideas oh, thanks for watching now you know how to tie on your own crappie jigs now go get some fish and we'll see you on the next adventure